Hello all, welcome to another episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today, we're having a look at Neil Kravitz's lecture entitled, What I Wish I Knew Sooner at the AAO. A very different style of lecture, where Neil spoke about his experiences, his mistakes both clinically and in his outlook in his career, and now what he's changed to correct those. Neil started off by saying he avoids early interceptive treatment or two-stage treatment. The reason being is that patients usually get sold into the idea of having, of having non-extraction treatment. And he saw the consequences of this. Patients would come back for reviews, have buckley rolled out premolars, protrusion anteriorly, but significantly posteriorly they would have impaction of the second permanent molars, some pathology. So what does Neil do now? Well, he avoids interceptive treatment. If he carries out expansion treatment, he's realistic. 30 turns of a screw only results in around 4mm of expansion within the actual arch. He avoids bonding size of teeth as much as he can, and he sticks to the rule of Jack Dale. If there is 10mm of incisor width of the central incisors and 10mm of crowding, those patients are going to require extraction therapy. He then spoke about records, how he used to take them in frequently and only for cases he felt he would use for publications. This resulted in him getting stuck and not being able to look back to see what's happened. So now he has records taken every other visit for patients, both intraoral, extraoral photos with the patients brushing their teeth as well. He builds in 10 minutes per appointment for this. This has resulted in two things. One, high quality records for reflection. Two, allows everything to slow down in his clinic so they can ensure that they're doing what is best for the patients and not missing out on any other items. He spoke about taking free, frequent OPGs every six months to detect for root resorption. Next, he spoke about bonded retainers and how they should be considered a temporary solution. Any bonded retainer will fail. In the upper arch, he quoted 50%. In the lower arch, 20%. He said, always use a vacuum form retainer to supplement this. He then went on to speak about his general advice in orthodontics. He spoke about when he qualified, he tried to cut his corners with respect to getting the concept of a free lunch, but he said there's no way to cut corners in orthodontics. We have to work hard to earn what we get. He spoke about his failure to really focus, and he was very honest and frank here that his focusing, focus initially was to make money and have case starts. We are all talented and gifted people, and we do achieve our goals, but having money centric to our goals will mean that we will forget about other things, the clinical side. And he drew the parallel about forgetting the impacted second permanent molar. He spoke about his third outlook, which was problematic, and that was arrogance. He described he thought he was the best. And he said that when you declare yourself the best, the only way forward is to have failure take place. He described a theoretical model of Dunning-Kruger, where somebody who starts off carrying out a new activity has highest confidence initially. As they gain experience, they go through an incredible reduction in their confidence. And as they gain further experience and become experts, their confidence then returns. And he said that this is where we should see ourselves as clinicians. We should be humble because humility means that we get to see what we're actually doing. And if we are proud, we will have blindfolds on and not see what's actually happening to ourselves clinically. His concluding remarks were to slow down and to commit to improving each day in our own way. That's the end for another episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Look forward to the next episode and please do subscribe.